seven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Boom! Waha! <laughs> Basil is not providing me with any competition because <laughs> he's a bag. <laughs> one of the interesting things about competition in our life, and I'll use boxing as an example. Uh, I don't box, I just punch and kick. Boxing is where two people come into a ring and one person is the winner. And for me, that's the ultimate sport. Now, probably close to that, if you don't want to get hit, would be tennis, for example, where two people go onto the court and one person wins. They're obviously both really fit. They're both good at tennis. Uh, the person with the strongest headspace is usually the winner. I think boxing's the same. Obviously, if you're going into a boxing fight, you need to know how to fight. Uh, you also need to understand the strategy of the other person, of course. And interestingly, one of those sports where whether you agree with the sport or not, uh, you can win by knockout. So I'll use an example there. Uh, if you don't believe that you're the best person and two people go into a ring, if you don't believe you're the best, is it possible that you would lose? If the other person believes that you're the best, is it possible that they will lose for themselves because they don't believe in themselves, they believe that you're better? And I'm asking those questions because competition <laughs> in the Western world today has become almost a swear word. It's like uh, we don't want people to compete. We want people to uh, just show up and participate. And I'm not, I don't want to get into the argument of whether that's right or wrong. What I do know is that we still have Olympic Games, we still have World Championships, we still have Tennis Grand Slams, we still have sport where there is a win or a loss. And when it comes to competition, how do you beat the competition is an interesting question. How do you deal with competition in business? And that's one of the things that drives a lot of people crazy. You know, there's, there's somebody coming into competition with me or how do I keep up with the competition or what's the competition charging? And it screws with their head because there's other people doing the same thing that they do. And I'll just use that as an interesting side note. If you are, a, and my husband's a martial artist, so he's constantly competing world level, world championship level, world cup level, international level competition. And one of the things he's always very thankful for is that there is competition, particularly at his age, because if, if nobody shows up to compete with him, he can't fight, he can't have a competition. And couldn't that be a headspace to consider in business? Isn't it possible that if there is no competition, you would get lazy or you wouldn't be your best because you have nobody to compete with? You can train on your own. You can come to the martial art mat, mat and have a box. You can box Basil like I do, just punch Basil. But that doesn't make me any better at the sport. That just keeps me fit and strong. If I want to get better, I need competition. Isn't that true in business as well? If I want to get better, I need competition. So how about, first of all, we'd be really thankful for our competition, whether it's our sporting competition or our business competition, or even if we're competing for a in, a in a bodybuilding event, or we're competing for a relationship, or we're competing for a spot on a school board, or we're competing for a position in, in, a, in a business. If there was no competition, how would we get better? Could we be thankful for it? Then is it about beating the competition? And that's where that argument comes in. If you show up, whether you win or lose, does it matter? And I always ask this question, who are you competing with? And I'll use K-Man's headspace when he goes to a world championship into a, onto a mat to fight. He goes fully prepared. So he's fully fit, fully strong. His, uh, his headspace, he's, he's actually a man who is fearless. He's not courageous where he feels the fear and do it, does it anyway. He's fearless. You can actually see in his eyes when he fights that he's fearless. So he goes fully prepared. If somebody beats him, he gets quite excited about that because all he says is this, it just means that the person that I competed with today was better than me, which is exciting because I now have to get better if I want to beat that person. If he goes into competition, which I've never seen him do, but if he goes into competition, if he wasn't fit enough, wasn't strong enough, wasn't prepared enough and wasn't mentally tough enough and he lost, then he's not angry with his competition. He's just, now I know what I have to do differently. Now I've never seen him do that. But isn't that interesting? It's a, just a different headspace. Are we really competing with our competition or are they there to make us better? If they beat us, fantastic, because it means we're not as good as we need to be. And there's that beautiful quote, which you'll find in most motivational books. Isn't the person I'm competing with the person I'm going to be tomorrow? So 
or whoever I am today, I want to be better tomorrow. And isn't that my only competition? I think the, the, the quote also goes, the only person I'm competing with is the person I see in the mirror. I'm thankful for the people I'm competing with because they make me better. But ha- and how would I get better without them? But ultimately, I'm not competing with them. I'm competing to make sure that I keep getting better. There's also some great quotes I've heard from other sports people where, and this often happens in tennis or boxing, any kind of martial arts where there's only two people involved, where they say, nobody lost here today. <laughs> so somebody might have got the gold medal and somebody else got the silver medal, but they both competed at, the, at top level. Uh, there's the tennis players who say that they might, the blokes might go to a five-set match and it was really close and, and one guy wins by you know just the one point, but they both played at their, at their 100% effort. They both put in an amazing performance. It's just that one person got that little pip at the end. And that's a beautiful quote. Nobody, it's, nobody wants to compete with somebody who's not as good as them. And I use again martial arts. K-Man doesn't want to fight with somebody who doesn't, doesn't know how to fight. There's no reason for that. Why would you beat up somebody or why would you want to fight with somebody? Because you would beat them up if they're not good at fighting. And that's what I never understand about bullies because tough, strong, powerful, passionate people never pick on strong, powerful, passionate, positive people. It's just weak people who pick on weaker people, which there's that great example of that and I think it's a, a fable or a... Or a, a um, might be a fairy story about the guy who his goal is to have the tallest building in the village Uh, and he could have the option of building a tall building and creating a beautiful building and building building the tallest one but that's hard work and discipline and commitment and focus so he goes around and pulls down everybody else's building so now his tiny little building is the biggest building in the village well what a ridiculous thing to do isn't that what bullies are doing there they don't like themselves or they don't they can't communicate effectively or they they have low self-esteem and low self-confidence and they feel weak so they go and pick on a weaker person to try and make them feel better I always feel I feel that I always think that when I see people saying nasty things on social media or picking on people I just think that is just proving to the world that you don't really like who you are because powerful passionate positive people would never pick on somebody else they just want everybody else to be as powerful and passionate as positive as they are which is the interesting thing about competition. Nobody who competes at a top level wants to compete with somebody who isn't very good. Every 100 metre sprinter wants to sprint against the best sprinters in the world so they get faster. Every tennis player wants to play against the best tennis player so they get better. Everybody in business wants to compete against the best. So let's just say you have a health club because as an exercise professional, I've I've managed health clubs all over the world. And I've watched a lot of health club owners get very scared, anxious, even annoyed or angry that somebody's opening a health club in their area. Well, I'm the exact opposite and think about this. If you're running a business a certain way, there's two reasons why somebody would come into your your area to run the same business. One is they think they can do it better than you. Good, that's a great challenge for you, isn't it? So now you've got somebody to compete with to force you both to get better. The second one is that they know that that area is going to be growing. So they're actually not trying to steal your clients or your members. They just know that the area is going to be growing. There's going to be enough people living in that area for two health clubs and or two businesses that do the same thing. And we can't please all of the people all of the time. Another great example of that is the Starbucks company. Uh, people used to drink coffee at home. Did you know that? <laughs> the Starbucks guys came along and said, well, there's only one guy. He said, Let's make these beautiful places, and he called it the third place, where people can go and drink coffee and stay there all day and just enjoy the experience of coffee. Now it's just a normal part of our life and there's coffee shops everywhere. But it's interesting because uh, every time somebody opens a coffee, another coffee shop, people get, oh, my God, there's another coffee shop. But surely the more people that drink coffee out, the more people are going to drink coffee, and that's exactly what happened with Starbucks. They opened lots of Starbucks, and then people went into competition, and then somebody else went into competition, and then somebody else opened up in competition, and now there's everybody drinks coffee out. They changed the way we literally changed the way we drink coffee because there was so much competition. Uh, restaurants do the same thing. You have one restaurant on your own million miles away from everybody, it's difficult to do business. 
But if you have a restaurant in a restaurant precinct where there's lots of competition, lots of different choice, one night I might have Indian, and one night I might have Thai, and one night I might have Japanese, but they're all together. They're in competition with people's dollars, but they're giving people a choice. But the ultimate outcome there is that more people eat out because there's more choice to eat from. There's more competition. So why are we so scared of it? If you are an exercise professional and you're a, working in a health club, for example, the more personal trainers, the more personal exercise coaches in the facility, the better, because it means that there's a culture of personal training. Now, I don't like to use the word, you know that, because for me, personal training, there's so many people that have had a bad experience with a personal trainer, and often that bad experience is because somebody was working in a facility, a new trainer came in, they got all scared and instead of getting better at what they do, they got worse because they got scared of their competition. Wouldn't it be a good idea to use everybody that's doing the same thing as you are as a reason to be unique and different and stand out from the crowd rather than look at them as competition? So the more people doing the same thing, the better. That's competition, but it means we all get better. Uh, 24 hour health clubs, there didn't used to be any of them. Now there's one on almost every corner. But now they've all got to work harder and 24 hour gyms has become a normal part of our life. So yes, there's lots of competition, but it means that if you have a 24 hour gym, what are you going to do differently? How are you going to do it better? How are you going to be wiser and smarter in your business? We can't live without competition. Now I don't want to get into the argument of whether it's just about showing up or whether it's about winning. But we've got to have people to compete with because how else would we get better? I love coming out here and boxing the bag, but it's never, first of all, I'm never going to get in the ring and have a fight. And it's not that I don't think women should do that because I've seen some very tough, strong, powerful women that have actually got to get into the ring and have a fight. But I do this for fitness. This is not this is not part of my competitive lifestyle. But me coming out here and boxing the bag is never going to make me a boxer or a competitive martial artist. Uh, one of the fun things that came in always asks people when they say, "Yes, I'm an MMA fighter, or I'm a or, or I'm a boxer." He always says, "How many fights have you had?" And ultimately, if you haven't had a fight, if you haven't been on the ring and comp- in the ring and competed, then you haven't. You don't actually know how good you are because you've had no competition. So what if we think about competition as the ultimate way to get better? What if we love everybody that opens in competition to us in business? And this is just a fun thing. Uh, K-Man literally opened the first education college for personal training in Australia. It was opened on the Gold Coast. It was the National College of Fitness, it was called at the time, in 1989. So it's been around a really long time. And there were no others. There was one in Sydney called Network, but on the, certainly on the Gold Coast in Queensland, there were no others. Uh, We've had team players that we put into our business to help them grow and get better who have gone and opened up other colleges. There are now literally hundreds, if not thousands, of fitness business or there's fitness colleges everywhere. And I love it because I, lo- I love what I do and I'm really proud of what I do and I keep getting better at what I do. But because there are other people trying to do what I do, it forces me to think creatively, think differently, think, dif- uh, think brilliantly every single day. Competition forces us to get better. So rather than compete with other people, though, I'll ask this question again. Who are you really competing with? When you look in your mirror today... And then you look in your mirror tomorrow, will you be able to look back on yesterday and say, I am better than I was yesterday. I'm smarter, wiser, stronger, tougher, more mentally resilient because I've learnt today, I've grown today, I've gotten fitter and stronger today. I've competed with myself and I've gotten better. Could that be a really great question? So whether you're a sports person or a business person, enjoy all competition because competition makes us better. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I feel good. No, 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 no. I knew that. I would now. Woohoo!